May you find happiness and peace. And may your home stand the test of time. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mary. Today I'll be reacting to Socialist Try to Outsmart Charlie Kirk but fails. So without further ado, let's get started. So, I have a... So I've got a question for Such you. Such a refined comment. I have a question for Mr. you, and, and I have a, a quick follow-up. Such a refined up. comment. So my first question for you is, do you know how much a, a K-12 education costs? Per pupil or per school? Per, per student. Dispens depends on the school district or state. Let's, let's talk about an average. So, so per year, on average, it's about $18,500 per pupil, depending on the city or municipality or state. It can go as high as $27,000 per pupil if it's second through fourth grade in Chicago. Or it can go as low as $14,100 per pupil if it's private or charter school, which actually has proven to bring down the price of education. So thank you for the trivial pursuit type question. I'm actually surprised he had such a comprehensive answer to that. So yeah, I'm sorry, what? I I'm surprised he had such a comprehensive answer to that. So kudos to you. Thank you. Um, my, my follow up, a question on that. No, hold on. This is a serious question, though. Um, you know, if you're, if you're advocating for uh, pure uh, capitalism. More of a where, capitalist society, sure, most absolutely. Sure. Which, uh, one of the things you need to talk about is education, right? Let's talk and about it. Education, uh, it's a huge amount of taxes, huge amount of spending per student across the country. You know, we're looking at tens of thousands per year. Now, in, in a communist society, let's, or sorry, not communist, capitalist society, uh, let's say there are none of these taxes. You expect each parent to have these hundreds of thousands of dollars to pay for the education of each of their children just for schools leading up to okay. college. So let me ask you a question. What, what funds local schools? Property taxes, federal taxes, and a load of other taxes. So w what's the predominant funder of local schools? The most important one's going to be property Pro taxes. Property tax. Have I ever advocated for the abolition of property taxes? You're talking about getting rid of a socialist institution and Correct. the biggest socialist property institution. Property tax is anything but a socialist institution. It's an ownership tax. If you don't want to pay property tax, it's, don't, don't it's buy the property. It's large contributions of everyone to take care of everyone in the way that you but accept if, it. If you, you don't want to live in the neighborhood, live somewhere else. You can live somewhere with next to no property tax. You can live in Butte, Montana with sure. a $14 a year property tax. There is no education system in the United States in which you can not get an education by living there. That's correct, yes. That is a but socialist But if you want to pay next to no, okay, it's not, so you, what's your argument, that I'm somehow like against taxes or? No, I, I, am, am, but, I am asking in a world without the taxes that you're talking well, I, I want, about. I want to understand the question precisely. In this world where you have limited to no taxes, the okay. capitalist model, which is that, so let me make it perfectly clear. I would love to abolish the federal income tax. Probably not going to happen. So we can go to a 10%. Everyone pays 10%. That's plenty of money to fund essential government services. Now, let's talk about funding of schools. I've never not once said get rid of property tax. There's more than enough money in the property tax system, in the state tax system, and in the other ways that we fund education, such as the lottery and other government revenue services, to effectively fund public schools if if you're able to fire bad teachers and fight public sector teacher unions, if you're able to do that, if you're able to do that. Thank you. Wow, I, I feel this is my first time hearing of property tax, you know, because in Africa, we don't, we don't experience, we don't experience that. We don't experience anything like public tax, you know, when you, I mean, property tax, when you build your house, you live in your house for free. No one is coming to tax you. The only thing is after hundred years, you need to renew your license to own the land but well, i think that will be less than let's say a hundred dollars and the land is still yours so i don't think we experience that you know they don't tax us they don't tax our property even if it's a rental property you're free to rent your property to whoever you want to rent it to without paying a dime to government because you built it with the money anyway and i think that is one thing i love about africa you know because even the, um Chris Brown said it. He said most of our celebrities are uh, have you know cars, expensive cars, and we don't pay taxes on it. You know, after pay, paying your um, what's it called, shipping fee, your duties, and all that is it. You drive your cars. Okay, you pay for your insurance. You paid for your road worthy. You know, for to be able to drive the car on the road, you pay for that. But you don't pay tax on your car every month. I mean, every year, like, like it's it's now done. You know, and I feel that is. The benefit of living in Africa because there are so many tax that unnecessary tax that you don't pay, and you know taking some of this tax money and using it to fund education is, is a very very good thing, like it's good. And Charlie made mention of um, firing, um, what's it called, some some teachers that are not really doing their work, 
and especially in government sectors you know government don't have structures to monitor these teachers that are not really giving out their best or unqualified teachers because you know in in in, in nigeria we have teachers that they come to school very very late they don't give out their very best because there's no one to supervise them and they don't care if you're listening or not they just go there they teach and they go you have to pay attention you have to beg your your fellow student to keep quiet so that you can listen they don't care okay unlike private institution private institution make sure that yes the classroom is conducive their teachers give out their very best you know and the students are, are learning like really really learning and I think that is where private institution beats public institution. And I think um, when it comes to private in institution after, outside the shell of Africa, their, their school fees are less compared to Africa. You know, Africa, we, we, we pay a whole lot in private institution because, you know, governments don't really finance or care about um, updating their equipment in public institution. They just build and they leave like some of those, some of the equipment there for like 10 years 20 years without even updating anything in it and sometimes these teachers they struggle because I, i've been to government school whereby they don't have laptops to teach their, 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 their students you know students in in primary school in in um junior grade they don't have this equipment you know they they, they, they draw things they sketch things that are supposed to teach them and i feel it's the wrong way to go about it you know they don't have well equipped computer lab they don't have well equipped library but it you can't find such a thing in private institution they make sure because they charge you more so the fact that they charge you more means they need more money to equip their school and they do it because they do you know they have these pta meetings whereby they show parents what they've spent the money they contributed for you know part of their school is what they've used it to build and all and i think that is what motivates to the parents to bring you know their children to their school because they know that their children are, bene are, 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 are benefiting for what they are paying for Anyway, I, I love this so much and I love the fact that Charlie, you know, explained things, you know, even if he's not in support of, you know, taxes, you know, some unnecessary tax, but he's trying to let us know that, yes, even if when you tax, use it for your goods and you don't, you don't just tax your citizen to finance war. You don't tax your citizen to buy more high-grade ammunition. You tax them to build more infrastructure, to build more things that will benefit them. I know defense is good, it's good to, you know, defend your country, but if, if you don't start up war, then there is no need for defense, you know, African or, um, or some African countries have, have gone for like years without even experiencing war, you know, almost 100 years without experiencing war, except maybe inter-war, you know, war in, within the country, you know, people trying to break out and stuff like that, but, you know, we don't fight against each other, and I think that is one thing i love about africa like kind of it, it it shows that we are all from the same roots you know because when you see a certain culture in ghana you also see that culture in nigeria you know there's a bit almost the same thing to show that we are all from the same roots you know some of us migrate during the slavery slave trade and all but we still we can you can easily trace your roots and we don't fight against each other okay unlike the western world but that is what war just makes us unique I, I just love that. Anyway, it's, it, it has been in my mind since and I just want to say it, you know. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section. If it's your first time visiting the channel, click on the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I remember this.